Happy Monday, everyone. We are going to do a little mail time today. This is one of my favorite shows to do because I get to see what you guys are working on and what you're sending in, and I hope that this inspires you too as a photographer. Let's get going. This book is from Nicola, who lives in Dallas, just down the street. It's called Structure Slash Photography, and Nicola writes, uh, I self-design and print a new booklet about once a year, reassessing what I published and created through the previous year, and rethinking my whole collection towards the goal of making it tight, iconic, and true to the current me. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers, Nicola. Nicola, thank you for the book. This is quite awesome, and I love the whole idea of doing these once a year. I have had several people who do this. This is a really nice way of collecting your work and presenting it, and I think for a lot of people, probably myself included, it's really easy just to go year after year and you keep everything on a hard drive and you just look at it, but actually printing your work out and putting it together as a collection is really important and I'm glad to see people doing that. So thanks for the book. This is awesome. Next up is a little book called Color. This comes to us from Jared Gerlachis, I think you say your name. Also, he sent in this groovy, great tasting lager coaster. Making me thirsty, brother. This booklet slash zine is an almost random grab of stuff on my hard drive. The images were made during the past year or two with film cameras complete with light leaks, as well as digital compacts, SLRs, and phones. No, I don't have any Holgas or 4x5s, but there's still time. You know what, uh, Jared? I don't care. This is awesome, and I think the point that I always make when I talk about Holgas and stuff like that is it really doesn't matter what you're shooting on as long as you're making something interesting with it and you're speaking what comes from the heart, and I think this is really quite awesome, so thank you for sending the book. One of the most often questions that I get asked around these mail shows is could I talk more about publishing a zine or a book, and how do you go about getting this done? Do you use an online service? Do you use somebody locally? What's the best way to proceed? And I want to use this as an example because this is entirely handmade. This comes to us from Rebecca, has a very interesting cover on it, which I think is very cool, and this is literally just printed out and stapled together. You don't need anything fancy, and a lot of people think that, well, I have to print in mass, or I have to do a volume of a book, and you really don't. You can do a whole series of these handmade. In fact, I would actually argue that the handmade thing is almost better than having something that's commercially printed, even though doing your work either way is a great thing. But there's a sense of intimacy that I really love that comes from this stuff. And I want to share this with you because I think it's really cool. So Rebecca writes, Dear Ted, enclosed in this envelope is my first ever zine entitled Film Old or Heat Damaged. It starts about seven and a half years ago when I took a film photography class at my local community college. While I didn't particularly do well grade-wise due to my teenagerly procrastination towards homework, that'll happen, I left the class with a newfound respect for the art of photography. I also left with the urge to take my film camera with me everywhere I went, and that's when I dis that's what I did this summer. Fast forward to earlier this year, and it has been a long time since I picked up my film camera, and I decided that I wanted to get back into the hobby. One of the first things on my agenda was to develop these old film rolls. Through all these years, I held on to the film with the intention to develop, but never got around to it. So finally, I did it and created the zine. I would love some feedback. Thank you for your time and consideration. Rebecca, Rebecca, this is quite awesome. I love the whole idea of the mystery film canister. I have a box of them in there that I don't know what's on them. That's from time to time I forgot to develop, and I think that's a really cool idea. So thanks for the zine. You guys take note. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be awesome, and this is definitely that. This is also from the School of Handmade, and it's a completely different approach, and I really, really love this. This comes from Martin, who writes, Hi, Ted. Merry Christmas. Sorry about that, man. It is a big stack of mail back there. I hope you like this. It was shot on my homemade camera about a month ago. It's a bit crude compared to recent digital models that you have received, but not bad for a close-up filter and a sheet of film. Keep up the good work. Kind regards, Martin. This is so cool. So this is a handmade booklet with exactly one photograph inside. This is actually a contact print. So the photograph was made on a paper negative and then contact printed onto one sheet. What I love about this, it's one photograph and it's crude and it's awesome because it's handmade and the whole thing becomes an object. This is so cool. Object is a bit obscure word. That's a word that we used to use back in my old museum days. Works of art, objects, it could be sculptures, photographs, whatever. But it makes it something more than just a photo that lives in a digital form. So Martin, thank you. This is really awesome. Y'all know what I like. Okay, this is extremely unusual. This is one 
of the most different types of presentations on a book I've ever seen, but it is very cool. This is a book by Megan Doherty. This comes to us from Ryan, who he and his partner are from England, and they are running a small independent online photography bookshop. Essentially, I am imposing my ideas of youth, freedom, beauty, and rebellion onto the landscape of small town life. This has to be the most unusual book I have ever seen. So the back flap, and I opened this a minute ago, it took a while to get back together, but it's very cool. The back flap is held on with magnets. And when you open that up, you have this little ribbon that you simply pull up. And the book comes out as well as the description. Very cool. Pages aren't bound. Thank you, Ryan, for the book. Oh yeah, these guys are selling this. And if you want a copy, you can pause this video. I'll put a link in the show description, but there's your 10% your off code right there. Thank you, sir. Well done. This comes from Ed Rutledge, who I sort of know online because he's been a viewer for a long time. And I think he sent me stuff before, but this is really cool. He says, Dear Ted, much has been said about how emerging photographers might be able to get exposure for their output and perhaps gain the exposure of doing a specific project-oriented work. I'd like to offer up a suggestion. Do volunteer work that matters. I have an ongoing arrangement with the State of Oregon slash State Rehabilitation Council. My photographs are featured as background photos, page art, and on front and back covers. Volunteer work can provide a valuable experience to the photographer and add focus to a project or subject matter. Ed, thank you for sharing this. You have a really good point there, and I do think it's important to give back as photographers, and what a wonderful way to do it. There's some wonderful images in here. Thank you for the annual report. And this book is from Jeremy Greenberg, who I met through this show. So I guess it was about a year ago, I helped out when Chelsea Northrup and some other YouTubers all got together to do a water relief effort for Puerto Rico. One of the things that I did was I made myself available for photo critiques, and Jeremy and I had a probably about an hour-long call. He's a really nice guy. He lives in Hong Kong, and he put together this beautiful little book, and in the cover he writes, To Ted, thank you for helping me to focus on the art part of making pictures. Keep it up. Your friend Jeremy H. Greenberg. Jeremy, thank you for the book, and I promise I will try to make it to Hong Kong eventually. I We talked about some possibilities. It's a long trip and I got to figure something out, but it would be a lot of fun to do. Anyway, Jeremy, thank you for the book. This is beautiful. Then finally is The Desert Fever, which is this really cool looking book from Sebastian, who writes, Hi, Ted, big fan of your YouTube channel. Wanted to share with you my first zine. I hope you like it. All the best, Sebastian. This is beautifully printed and I love the way it has an image that's just kind of stuck to the cover there. That is really awesome. Sebastian, thank you. You guys are the best and when I say that these are my favorite videos to make they really are because I get to see what you guys do a lot of times this is a one-way street with the camera and this is what I'm looking at well you can't see it but I don't really interact with you guys so to see you guys doing work and sharing that with everybody else at least I can do is feature you on here so anyway a lot of cool stuff coming up this week I am headed out at the end of the week my friend Eric is coming down here I have a couple more videos I'll do before then and hopefully we'll be making videos while we're there but we're gonna drive to West Texas to the town of Marfa. Marfa is a little town probably two hours outside of El Paso, probably, I don't know, 60 miles from the border of Mexico. It's in the southwest part of Texas. And in the 70s, minimalist sculptor slash artist, he didn't like being called any of those things because he's an artist, but anyway, Donald Judd had a building there that is where the Donald Judd Foundation is today. He made some works there, but there's works by him and then other people like Klaus Oldenburg and Don Flavin. And anyway, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna go and get some pictures and just do some cool stuff. And and so stay tuned for that because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, if you haven't been listening to the podcast that I do, check that out. I do this with my friend Jaron Schneider, and we do this once every week, and we post it on Sunday. So if you're looking for something to listen to on your commute, it's a good hour long of us going back and forth about various photography-related subjects. I'll put a link in the show description. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later. Later.